just want to add, uh, this is going to be like a hundred percent subjective today. So if, <laughs> if, 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 if we give your favorite theme a poor rating, please keep in mind that we're trying to do our best to you know, personally rate these based off of every Lego theme out there, right? Number two, um, let us know in the comment section what your list is or write the podcast uh, at afallswelcome at gmail.com. Hello, Bricks, Chicks, and Minifigures. You're listening to A Falls Welcome, where we talk about all things Lego from the perspective of two adult collectors. We're your co hosts, West and Grinch. And today we're going to be talking about tier lists. Specifically, we are going to do a tier list of the entire Lego themes. Uh, Grinch, I think that's over 194 distinct Lego themes. Uh, listeners, viewers, I promise. Uh, we are going to work through this one uh, at a reasonable clip, so uh, bear with us. But before we get into that, let's get, do some quick PSAs. All right, listeners, I just wanted to, to call it out early. I'm a little under the weather. Wes Jr. decided to bring home a respiratory virus, and it has both myself and my significant other a little sick today, so that's why I sound maybe a little more nasally than I usually do. I uh, hope to get better soon. And next, let's talk about some exciting LEGO news. Exciting LEGO news. So Grinch, I know right now there's been kind of, we're in this lull in between uh, a wave releasing and more information kind of dropping about future sets, themes, uh, etc. But what stood out for you for exciting LEGO news this week? Yeah, we're kind of in that, like, everything's been announced lull, so it's like rumors and leaks mostly for, like, August or end of year. Um, but what I am most excited for is obviously Baradur. I've got a reminder in my phone to, like, get up at, like, midnight on June 1st to make sure I get my copy of it. Um, super excited about that and um, yes it's going to be tough because I have so much to do around my house and like I'm also going to want to build that like we're getting house painted um, we're still unpacking stuff so like it's going to suck to just stare at it but I want to get the gift with purchase and who knows I might sneak in a bag or two here or there what about you? Nice. you know there isn't much that I'm uh, overly excited about that I feel like I need to get on June 1st. I've already kind of mentioned some of the city sets stand out for me, specifically the the truck. I've seen some uh, YouTube videos of those uh, people building them and reviewing them, and that looks fun. Apparently, you can get it for $25 off at Costco right now, Mm -hmm. uh, which is going to be one of our other topics here in just a second. But nothing really on June 1st that I have to pull the trigger on. I'm over here trying to buy sets on May 29th. I'm so excited. Um, all right, I did. What else? Yeah, so I did notice that, uh, or I saw. Don't know how true this one is, so like, take it with a huge grain of salt. Something that people have been asking for a while now. Um, again, we've talked about code names on here. They don't really mean anything about the actual IP. Last time I was super wrong, um, but this is not me rumoring this. This is like with the post I saw this rumor. Uh, that there's a new theme called Clown coming out, and it's rumored to be The Simpsons. And I even think they already had a set price. Yeah, two hundred and thirty dollars. Um, it'll be one direct to consumer. So we'll see what it is. I don't. I'm not. I don't know if they'll just redo the The Simpsons house at this point because it's been so long, or if they'll do a Krusty Burger. I, I don't think they can just continue on with The Simpsons where they had left off, uh, because that was what. 10 years ago now, so I think that they would do a firm reboot. You know, for a theme, that one's just one that hasn't really stood out for me. I'm not a huge fan of the IP. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's some you know, great lines from The Simpsons that are in the cultural zeitgeist, but it just, it's not something that gets my heart racing, so 
I, I'm curious to see what they build. Certainly, if they put together a house, that might look great. The previous one did. Mm-hmm. It'd be funny if they did like Moe's Bar, but that would be like a little <laughs> too adult themed for Lego. That would, be, um, that would be hysterical if they did. I would just like to like sit back and grab the popcorn and like you know watch everybody freaking out on Twitter about it, be like, "Oh my god, why am I my kid? Yeah. The soup's just Which is funny because most of the people like on a, a you know Twitter are adults anyways, complaining about Lego right. like being for kids. <laughs> Probably never even use Lego. Um, you know, they just don't understand. Yeah, I'm. I don't have anything um, specifically. Uh, or I'm not specifically excited for that set, but uh, the last thing I wanted to share for everyone is if you are a member of, of Costco, uh, check out their deals online. And if you're not a member of Costco and you're an adult in the United States, um, this might just be the you know reason for you to get a Costco membership. Uh, let them know that West and Grinch sent you. Uh, those aren't our real names, so I don't think there's any way that that would ever like us, help us. But you know, they get some street won't, cred. Won't do anything for us if we <laughs> say that. So you could just put that out in the universe. How about instead tell your um, friends about an awesome podcast called A Falls Welcome that you listen to? There you go, and maybe the people at Costco too. Um, no, <laughs> uh, they have some really great deals. They're doing some of those bundle sets that they do. Um, that they, you know, only Costco can do. The one that stood out for me was they called it the New York City bundle, and it was the New York City architecture skyline combined with the Natural History Museum modular from this year, and it was releasing for three hundred dollars US. Uh, so for sale online, they had some other great bundles. They looked really fun. There were some botanical ones, some technic ones. I believe there was even some Star Wars and and other licensed IPs in there as well. So. If that's something that interests you, uh, go take a look. Grinch, do you have anything else for exciting LEGO news? I think this is the shortest news segment we've ever had in the history of this <laughs> podcast so far. So I do not. I know, but we have a giant tier list to let's, get to. Let's so push. We'll keep, let's do we'll it. Keep the pace going. Today's topic. All right, guys. And now for our main topic for the day. We're going to do a tier list, like we said up front, of all of the LEGO themes uh, that have ever been released. Uh, Just as a note, we're using uh, Ethan Bob's tier list. Uh, So on uh, tiermaker.com, Ethan put this together. It is updated from uh, 2 2024, so with our newest themes available, uh, 1949 to 2024. Um, but I actually don't have a lot of experience with tier lists, but Grinch does. Grinch, you have a couple videos where you've done tier lists. Can you explain to the audience real quick uh, if they don't know what a tier list is, like what the purpose of this is and how it works? I love tier lists. So uh, today we'll be going through every LEGO theme ever. We're going to start out, you know, uh, on the list here, starting out with Ninjago. This is not in any particular order that we're going through these. It's whatever Ethan Bob had done to set it up. We were looking at creating our own, but like this was already done in a really, really nice fashion. Had kind of everything we wanted to talk about, so we decided to push with it. Uh, but S tier is going to be the best tier, followed by A tier, followed by B, C, D, and then F. Uh, and then we have the U tier on our list for just unknown Obviously, Lego's been around since, or in this case, 1949. Uh, Neither West or myself have been around since 1949, or really even close to that. In fact, we're closer to the 2024 part than the 1949. Um, So the U is just reserved for for the themes that are just kind of unknown and that we're just not as familiar with. Um, so that we, you know, we want to be able to fair everything, judge everything fairly versus just being like, well, this sucks because we don't know it. So um, that's what you is kind of reserved for. We'll use it sparingly. Obviously, if it's a theme that's come out in the past 10 years and we're like, well, I don't have any experience with it. It's probably a reason. It's probably because it's like meh in general. So um, Wes, was there anything that I missed there or you want to add anything? No, I just wanted to acknowledge and review for the audience that both yourself and I, in terms of our own relationship with the Lego brand, uh, we were born in the early 90s. We have played with Lego dating back to the 80s uh, through today uh, and built Lego 
from the 80s through today. And so um, that's definitely more so how our experience with LEGO skews. So some of the even older themes from the 80s, the more established themes in the 80s and uh, 70s, we aren't going to have as deep of a tie into. Um, so just wanted to throw that out there. Um, there are some Lego YouTubers who sometimes confuse objectivity and subjectivity. And so I want to just clarify when we talk about something that is objective, it's something that has a measure of, of value or a uh, measurement, form of measurement that is recognized across the board. For example, the price of this Lego set is $99. There are four minifigures in this set. If we say that we like more minifigures than less minifigures, then the set with five minifigures is objectively better than the set with uh, four minifigures. Subjective thought is purely based on opinion. And so if we say that, well, this one has better playability, for example, than another set, and we were to rate that in one through five, while we are giving it a number rating, that is still a subjective decision uh, as to which number we give it. So I just wanted to clarify, I know that kind of gets, uh, it's confusing for some of our, our Lego YouTubers out there who don't quite have that figured out, but um, Grinch and I are going to use some sec subjectivity today as we explore these different Lego themes. So I wanted to call that out ahead of time and acknowledge our own subjective process which again skews a little bit more towards 90s through today and probably a little bit more towards our licensed themes than non-licensed themes. So just wanted to call that out up front before we get started. Grinch, do you have anything you want to clarify or um, correct me on before, yeah. before we get going? Just want to add, uh, this is going to be like 100% subjective today. So <laughs> if, 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 if we give your favorite theme a poor rating... Please keep in mind that we're trying to do our best to you know, personally rate these based off of every Lego theme out there, right? Number two, um, let us know in the comment section what your list is or write the podcast uh, at afallswelcome at gmail.com to share your S tier list with us. That way we can um, you know, hear, hear what yours favorite, favorite are too. Again, it's going to be a very subjective um a tier list, but you know, of course, hopefully at this point you've been listening to the podcast for a while, kind of understand you know our thoughts and opinions, and and should mostly align with them, or mostly you know you know, agree with more than half of them. I'd say fifty percent of the fifty one percent of the time, um, but definitely not all the time, right? It's good to have healthy healthy feedback and healthy criticism so that uh, you know we can we can push forward. But uh, just wanted to say that real quick, Wes. Yeah, no, thank you. And and I wanted to say lastly, just so everyone kind of understands, we're going to throw up the theme onto the list. Grinch and I are both going to say where we think it falls under. If we have a differing opinion, we'll discuss it. Uh, we'll default to if one of us... Um, one of us will either concede, and if, if we stick in the mud, then we'll go higher. Yep, we'll, we'll trend towards the higher theme, or the higher tier. So we're going to give everyone kind of the benefit of the doubt here. If we can so, split the difference, right. we'll split it. Um, you know, so if I say something's S and Wes says something's B, we'll call it an A. Now, if I say something's S and Wes thinks something's an F, then you know we'll probably call it a C. But if there's if it's not an even split, then then we'll figure out a way to split it. Absolutely, and and we'll we'll discuss that too. But that'll help us get through this a little faster. All right, you so want to get started here? Let's do it, Ninjago. Ninjago, what do you think, Wes? Oh, the pressure's already on. I I am gonna go with B. 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 Oh no. Okay. Well, I I was hoping we'd get a little further before you had to split the difference. <laughs> I was gonna say S, and since since I have the differing opinion here, let me let me rationalize it. It's the longest running. Well, one of the I mean, you know, city, right? But in terms of like original Lego creations of a theme. It's one of the longest running Lego themes, right? It gave us, I mean, amazing sets. Uh, it gave us a movie, right? I know this is not the Ninjago movie sets, but it did um, give us, you know, I guess three subsequent Ninjago city sets. And we wouldn't have had that without this. So that's where I'm going to say S, but I'm willing to split the difference with A. Uh, but 
what's your defensive B? You know, I think the sets are great. I think that the ones that don't rely on the Lego gimmicks are definitely really great play sets to um, to even you know some of the best building series i i would agree and and 100 percent that the city sets are, are fantastic um and arguably s tier sets but i think the the gimmicks the the spins the um boulders there's always kind of this weird gimmick every single year um that i feel like is sort of lost on the theme at this sure. point like they've kind of abandoned it but you know, we've talked in the past and joked about how Lego um, always has to have a gimmick or they're always exploring this new gimmick. It seems like they're doing that with more of their uh, internal license sets than their external license sets. But um, I, I could go with A. I, I, uh, I'm going to probably default to being a little more on the uh, stricter side, I suppose, um, than... than Good leaning higher, so we'll see how that plays out. But let's uh, let's keep moving. Are we are we good with A? Yeah, I think I think the highs here are really really high. I mean, like top five Lego sets of all time high, and the lows are really really low. So I don't think it yeah. can quite be S because of that. Uh, but certainly, you know, if you've got a top ten Lego set of all time within this theme, yeah, I think it's got to be A. Yeah, absolutely. Ninjago movie. I'm willing to go a little bit lower on B or C here. Uh, I, I think, could go with B. Yeah, I think I think it did give us Ninjago City, right? That was technically a Lego Ninjago movie set. It was based off the movie. Yeah. Um, but the other sets are just kind of meh uh, in total, and it definitely, I mean, it, it 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 just lives in the shadow of Ninjago because it's literally Ninjago, right? Yeah, I agree. All right, cool. That was that was easy. See, we can do this in like not seventeen hours. Um, all right, two down. Uh, the Lego movie. Um, I don't know. Uh, B, B for me. D, C. Yeah, um, go C. All right. I think I think not looking at the movie. If we were including the movie in it as like the product of Lego, I'd put it in in B. Uh, but in terms of Lego's themes, I don't know. I'm I'm definitely leaning more towards the B. But um, you were pretty definitive about the C. Why C? I. Oh. Other than like Blackbeard's Revenge. What about Benny's spaceship? What about the triple decker yeah. couch? I mean, do you own any of those? I don't, but I was also in my dark age when these came out. I just never wanted to go back and get any of them. But I did not Fair. buy any of the Lego Movie Two sets, so there's that. Except for the Velociraptors. I I think the the sets were fine. Okay. Um. I, I yeah. I don't. Know. It I, was it was a celebration of Lego for C. Yeah. Okay. Lego system. Now this was kind of like kind of like mm. creator before creator, right? But it was also really a sub theme. I mean, like technically for a while they had it split between Technic and System. Like Star Wars episode one was under system. It was still Star Wars, don't get me wrong. Um so this one's kind of hard to grade. I might suggest we just throw it in you. I think we throw it in you. Because yeah. it's it's more of a it's it's like they kind of split it from technic to system back in the day, and, yeah. and and like everything had the system. Just like way back in the day, everything had the Legoland logo at one point. So I don't. I'm not quite and sure. And listeners, if we are off base here, let us know. Yeah. And if, please correct the record if system if that our understanding of what system is here is not the same as your understanding. But I would agree with Grinch's take, and because. It encompasses basically everything that's not Technic. I'm more than happy to call it a, a U for us, for an unknown, because it's just sort of too too wide and, and vast for us to, to really categorize. So, All right. Up next, we have Blacktron. Um, I'm going to put in a C. I'll go C. Yeah, I feel like it's... Um, you know, Blacktron was a, was a theme that um, really built on like classic space, but I don't think it did anything to excel as you know from classic space. It just kind of felt like a a black and yellow version of classic space, whereas classic space was like a blue and gray version. <laughs> yeah, I think 
the variations on on classic space certainly are are interesting but i uh, you know when we talked about this this list and our original attempt at this we were actually going to call space all of the different space themes um, because that's actually how it was broken out in our source list and i i liked that because i thought that could competed very well with some of the other ones i think when you start to separate some of these out they sort of get lost in the larger shadow of like classic space or lego space and so something like blacktron i mean i think we probably had one or two of them growing up but mm-hmm. it didn't on its own again my my heart's not racing when i think about lego blacktron like it's it's not a something that i'm i get overly excited about so i'm i'm okay with c as well all right i like how we don't have any s so far because uh, Lego Avatar, uh, the blue people is coming up, and that definitely won't break that trend. No. Uh, up next, though, we have Castle. Uh, and this was like the 2000s Castle, the Lion Knight Castle. Um, not the remake that they just did. Sorry, it's, it's called the Lion's Knights um, from the early 2000s. This was when I was a kid, and you were a little bit older than me. Um, but I felt like it was a pretty solid castle castle series. I don't think it's anything higher than a B, though. And I'm kind of... Yeah, I could go with a C. Yeah, I'm kind of pushing C or B. The castle sets here were very strong, and I wanted a lot of them as a kid. Um, And, like, for me, this is what LEGO Castle kind of... Like, they need to bring this back. Um, Yeah. Yeah, definitely not like a Nexo Knights. (laughs) Um, So I'm I'm going to put it in B. B. Yeah, I'm going to put the B. It's no like Forest Men. It's no Lions Night. It's but it's it was really really solid for what it was. The sets were great. Um, a lot of nostalgia factor there for me. But you know, unlike um, you know Blacktron, I did I felt like this was the you know semi modern modern contemporary take on Castle from like the classic Castle that they had. This was kind of like that next kind of like full full fledged you know push into Castle. Yeah. All right. Time cruisers. West, what do you think D. about time? D. <laughs> it's D. I like time cruisers. I'm. I'm willing. I you know if we can say dreams is also a D. It just it, dreams cannot be higher than time. Cruisers. I like time cruisers because it was weird. It was like this first like weird Lego theme. It it really didn't exist for very long but I, but for me it's one of those like deep hit lego themes that like came about in the 90s and just nothing happened with it um i don't think that d is necessarily bad i just if you were to like if you were to show up at my doorstep tomorrow and you're like west i got you a time cruiser set i'd be like oh cool thank you for the uh antique lego vintage um, we prefer the word vintage vintage lego uh, super excited uh, about this one. I don't know. I, I just That's like fine. I said, it, they, it was almost a little too weird for me. It, and I when and that was at a time when I was craving more buildings and yeah. trains and Star Wars than I was like goofy vehicles with spiral wheels and all sorts of kind of other silliness. So it it's certainly a weird theme. And I, I don't really know where to put it. So the fact that you're like, it's a D, I'm like, cool, that makes sense. It, it is one that's just kind of like, it just happened, you know? I, I would not I would say weird, too, sounds like we're saying that's like a bad thing. I no, weird in a good like, way. I would agree. It's definitely different. And I, I guess I just, you know, when we're talking about themes, I'm thinking about, like, stories. I'm thinking about... Uh, cohesiveness, the longevity of the theme. This one didn't run very long. I think amongst our peer group, this one wasn't overly popular. Yeah. It just it wasn't one that really spoke to us. That's why I have it at a D. Yeah, and like it came out when we were kids, and us kids like we didn't buy it, and like you said, none of our friends bought it either. So, all right, Lego art. Um, if I can jump the gun here, I'm gonna say D. I might, I might even say F. The only reason... I, I would like to... Go ahead. I would like to argue D. I think 
it's an interesting new theme that is pushing the bounds. I really like the new space, the galaxy one, the yeah. Milky Way set. That, that was exactly what I was going to say. It belongs in D and not F. Yep. If they keep that going, I think Lego Art has a long um, road ahead of it, actually. So if, I'm if excited this to were see where it goes. Just the mosaics, like they had been doing, like when it first came out, I'd be like solid F. I really don't don't like those. Um, it's like the one, it like, you know, I know they were $120 for like 2,000 pieces. The price of part ratio is amazing. But like, when you sit down, it's like, it's a chore to build these, at least in my mind, as like a Lego fan, I get for some people, they might, they might like that, but it's a totally different Lego building experience. The only reason I have it, that you know, wanted to put it in D was because like you said, the galaxy, you know, stuff more like the Rolling Stones or the Parrot stuff, that's different. Still wouldn't buy it, but but just, yeah, D. Yeah, I agree. All right. Lego Avatar. So is this our first S tier? No, I'm just kidding. I'll stop trolling. Um, B? C? 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 Yeah. I, yeah. My one argument for anything higher than a C is that it got us... Um, 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 oh, my gosh. That guy, he has a really hard name to pronounce. The Colonel. I'm just going to say probably. the Colonel. What was his name? Jake Sully. <laughs> no, Jake Sully. No, the Colonel though. Um, Quartich or something like that. Quartch, Quartch. Thank you, uh, Colonel Quartch. He um, had full military fatigue, and then we got another one of them in the Avatar: The Way of the Water sets, um, which is like really cool. But like that's just one part of it. Um, yeah. I do really like some of the sets, but like again, C is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, it is what they it just is. Introduced right? it's a just, lot of it, yeah, variety of color. I think sure. I think that at least needs to be commended. Um, they got the long legs kind of introduced again. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of interesting. But it's and not like that was the like first of introduction of them, right? So it can't be like if this thing, if if this theme was like you know quoted for giving us the first long legs, it'd be a right. No, but the first introduction of them was so limited that this right. theme. Right, 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 really right. Kind of, yeah. But they're Anyways. very they're very specific use because you don't get I think you get one pair that could be like regular minifigure. But yeah, see, solid sets, see. solid theme. That's fine. Brickheads. What do you think about brickheads? I'll go A. A. Hmm. I was gonna say B. Because this is okay. one of those themes that, like, I don't know or I haven't seen. I guess I'm seeing it more nowadays than when it first came out of, like, people who just collect brickheads. But we've talked about it before, like, when you've built one brickhead, you've built them all. So to me, this is just That's Funko fair. Pop Lego, and I really don't like Funko Pop that much. Uh, but I do like brickheads. I just think it's, let's go with B. Yeah, I think it's B just think, because like it's it, it it relies on other themes, right? It uh, relies on license, yeah. and once you've built one, you've built them all. I think it's fun to see. Wow, I think that is sentiment is true. Um, I think it is fun to see the variety of different sure. brickheads that come out, and then it's fun to see them done in different scales. So you know, like the Yodas, the Gimlis, the Gollums. Um, the, all kind the of Jake Sully from Avatar in a wheelchair. There you go. And exactly, no, and, and so it's fun to see some of that variation. But yeah, you've built one Stormtrooper brickhead. You've built every single variation of that. You've built one, you know, Mandalorian brickhead. You've built, you know, you built Boba Fett. You've built the Mandalorian. You've built, I guess, the Boba, the Fett's, ones, but... the Boba Fett's shirt uh, building technique was super, super cool. But that was like the only time I was ever building a brick, and I was like, "This is really exciting" because they like place some plates kind of weird in it. Like you have to place them on the side and then yeah. lock them in with other bricks. But yeah, I think when I'm like going through a collection, I'm going through my own collection for that matter, and you see the brick edge, you're like, "Oh, those are cool." But you say that because they stand out and are you know diverse in like how they look, but you don't aren't immediately drawn to it. It's more of like a awesome, awesome, awesome. Oh, that's different and cool, but it's not like oh, that's like amazing and different it's just that's just different yeah agreed 
All right, I think we're going to have a split on this next one. It's the Chinese New Year's, and I want to call this a B. Um, That's okay. I'm good with B. Okay. These sets are just so alive. Um, they're, they're, it's, I think it's cool to just get different cultures represented in LEGO. You know, obviously, we had the Winter Village. I started collecting these Chinese New Year sets a little bit late, um, but you know, all, none of the sets have stickers, which is like, what the heck, you guys? Can't we do this for anything else? Um, ton of colors. They introduced that half round brick piece that they use as as like the the roof. I don't I don't think it's a terracotta roof, but it's that similar um, Chinese style of roof, right? So there's been new pieces introduced here. That would be terracotta. It is terracotta, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. really awesome just builds. Um, I just like seeing the different, you know, cultures, you know, Did I, they introduced I, that piece? It, it came out, uh, at the same time as this. Um, so my guess is that they needed, you know, like when they're budgeting for new pieces, they're like, well, do we have a use for this? Like, well, we're going to do this, this brand new series. And, um, I believe that was one of the first sets that it came out in. Yeah. Interesting. Which I think is a really cool piece. So, yeah. No, it's a great, it's a great series uh, theme. Uh, the Lunar New Year theme. I the only thing I think that I find maybe less compelling is almost the fact that it is a Lunar New Year theme, right? And so mm -hmm. every year, yes, you get something new, but a lot, like some of the torsos, some of the characters yeah, are all over. based on like the year. Sure. And so, um, I mean, I suppose if you're collecting them, it's neat, but. Uh, there's there's been a lot of really cool builds in there, but at the same time, uh, they just kind of get repetitive. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I love the fact that they have the like, you know, the animal of the year minifigure because it's like, oh, we got a mouse minifigure and like we got a Toro minifigure. Um, and I, th I I like that collectability aspect personally. Yeah, no, and I guess I said repetitive. It's not so much repetitive. I think they just they. Uh, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see what they continue to do with this theme. Sure. But I, uh, yeah, I think B is a good choice. City. I'll leave it at that. S. <laughs> really? Oh, he said really. Oh no. Um. Uh, yeah, S or A. It can't be lower than I A, think... dude. I mean, this is like the longest running Lego. Like this is like the idea of the Lego City is what everybody wants. You, you know, to build at some point in their Lego life, I can be pushed down to A, but no lower. I think that's fine. I think the new city sets leave a lot to, of lack uh, for interiors, for um, uh -huh. detail, and so I I do agree that it's a long running theme. I think there's a lot to city. You know, that's we've got our trains, we've got our um, there's a lot of old looking through the themes. There's a lot of old themes that have kind of been wrapped up into city. Did you know there was a Lego boats theme at one point? Yeah, there sure was. Um, yeah, that was like locked into city. There was the island adventure, or there was a not island adventure, but there was a whole other set of themes that had some of the yeah with like Lego people. Island. Yeah, yeah. I mean that all kind of become became city. Yeah. So. There's there's a lot with City. I think it's a great theme, but I do think it leaves a little bit to be desired with some of the, like I said earlier, detail uh, and build. Uh, yeah. Not even quality, but um, just the thoroughness of the builds. That's fair. It does it does leave a little bit to be desired. And I think ultimately, it's like whenever Lego City sets come out, I'm always like, those are really cool. I'm not going to buy it, though. It's because, you know, we've already had it because I've got the city set from 10 years ago or I just, you know, I, I don't have a city, so. So, yeah. All right, up next, uh, we have Lego Classic. Um, I don't know, D. I think that's fair. Lego Classic as a theme is is basically just the basic buildings. So I don't think, or not even buildings, but just basic building blocks. I I think 
they're you know sometimes they offer some interesting color choices and palettes you and i had once bought a lego classics pack for um essentially like parting it out but there's a lot of stuff in there that's probably gone unused in in my parts bin so i would agree as an adult fan of lego i this doesn't the lego classic theme doesn't really speak to me very much serves a purpose it is what it is it's nothing special it's just like a bricks literally well lego bricks are pretty special well yeah well, these are all lego bricks so <laughs> all right classic space um a eh. yeah i would agree i don't have the nostalgic factor that i get out of some of the other themes um, which is purely why I wouldn't put it in an S tier for us. Yeah, I think it's a great theme. Uh, it it encompasses so much, but as we already talked about, some of the other themes are broken out. So, I neither of us had a ton of classic space. Uh, no, and I'd certainly say up. there's aspects of classic space that are S. Um, certainly yeah. aspects of it that are S, uh, and it's borderline. You know, it it was really one of those first really just solid themes. There's a lot of love for classic space, but when it comes to like, you know, being subjective and like this is our personal list, it just not not an A for me or not an S for me. Yeah, I think it would. Uh, I think if we grew up in the '80s, classic space would have blown our minds. Sure, our tiny little minds. But and, and I think just... I think that's required to put it in an S because. Like back then, you would have been like, "There's nothing like this. This is amazing." Right. But now it's like, "There's video." You know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Does does classic space? If you remove the nostalgic factor and you look at it side by side with something like Star Wars, it's not even. Close. And sure, Star Wars has its context, but if you were to just look at the sets, I mean, certainly you'd probably be a little confused by the Star Wars sets. But at the same time, too, like the builds are better. The you know what I mean. Like mm-hmm. it just, it's just better Lego. Like at the end of the day, that has to be acknowledged too. I don't know. All right, creator expert, S tier. Yeah, I would agree. There is nothing that creator expert put out, and that's not an S tier in my mind. I think there are. Well, I okay, think... nothing below A. <laughs> I think just as a theme in general. I mean, that's the theme that's responsible for your your built up cars, right? Some of those big car models. That's the theme that's responsible for the bulk of the modular buildings. Mm-hmm. It's it's just a great theme for A Falls. Winter Village. Yeah, Ground. Winter Village. Oh my gosh! Yeah, absolutely. This is kind of the London dumping Bridge. ground for Lego, <laughs> and and we'll see that with icons in a few minutes when we get to it. But I would imagine icons is probably going to fall under S tier too. Spoiler alert! But it's it's where Lego can put their special projects that they just don't have a right. um, normal theme to put it under. Your, your one off license. Yep. So I would agree, S tier. Easy peasy creator expert DC. Uh, B? Yeah, I was going to say B or C. Yeah, I was leaning B or C too. I'm not personally like a huge DC fan. I don't have like really any of the Batman sets. I know people like them, but like externally looking at it, it feels like it's a dying theme currently. I know we're not just looking at it, you know, with recency bias. But I also think there's just a lot of repeats in this. Like, it's, you know, like you'd get a new Batmobile every year. You and I were talking on the phone yesterday about the Tumblr. And now there's like two identical UCS Tumblrs, which is not an issue, right? Like, we're not going to dock Star Wars for having two UCS Millennium Falcons. The difference, though, is that like Star Wars has like 50 UCS sets and DC does not. And they're already repeating. So for me, it's kind of like it's just a little dry, a little repetitive. And there, it needs a shot of life. And without that, I can't call it anything more than a B. And I think I just talked myself into a C. Yeah, you and I talked about this theme. It definitely is struggling. 
just the IP is struggling, which means I think the Lego theme ultimately struggles because their options to pick from are not vast. And I'm sure there's some DC fanboys out there, uh, you know, Snyderverse cut people who are like, well, there's plenty of really awesome stuff for Lego to build off of in the DC universe. And I mean, you're not wrong, right? Like, Lego hasn't really done like a wide series of Flash sets of Green Lantern sets. You could do some of like the Dark Batman sets or the um, I forget the Batman cartoon set in the future. But um, there's definitely some really solid stuff in the DC universe to build off of. But you know, Lego has to build these themes and, and build sets based off of what they think can sell. In my mind, DC should revisit the Dark Knight trilogy. I think there's a lot of interesting sets from the third movie that could be made again. Sure. Some of those camouflage tumblers and the Batwing. But um, I think that's really where DC's cultural cachet is still sort of resides. I think there's a lot of goodwill in what Christopher Nolan did. Uh, I don't think there's as much goodwill in some of the other themes. Certainly the first Wonder Woman movie was great. The second one was trash. So, you know, it, it's just hard to, to kind of figure out where we lie here. But I would agree. I, I would all argue C tier. Right, moving it to C. I agree. There's just yeah, a lot to be correct. desired still. Um, yep. If DC fans are probably molding right now, if you were to go back to 2010, this list would be different based off of what else has been released and what all was there. At the, the point that it is now, though, I don't think you can have it any higher. Um, friends. You saw me go for S. Did you see me go for S? Did you see me go for S just now? <laughs> I did. Uh, I did. I think A. Uh, I think the mini dolls keep it from being an S tier. Yeah, so. I agree. I just hate mini dolls. Like you can well, you can cope all you want about why it's great. You're not wrong. Awesome colors, right? A really freaking cool build. I mean, we talked about the issues with City Friends fixes half those issues. Yeah. Uh, I've even bought Friends sets before. Uh, that 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 new modern mansion that we talked about. A great set, but I just can't get past mini dolls. I can't call an S tier with the mini dolls. Could I, could I say something a little controversial? Oh my gosh, are we going to get demonetized for the $5 no. that we make a year? <laughs> I think that Friends is great, and I honestly think mini dolls are great from a perspective of scale. I'd have to look at them. I think they're ultimately too wide, are they not? Like completely too like the wide. Dolls? Yeah. Like, like are they any wider than two bricks? Yeah. No, they're oh well, like with their I think they're three shoulders now. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I dude, I haven't spent like any time with mini dolls. I think they probably scale better to Lego than the minifigure does. They might. And yeah. I think if you were to Gale they're four wide figure. with their arms out. They're four wide, but oh, their torsos okay, are two mind. wide. But so is the Lego minifigure. They're just taller. Yeah. All right. Then it's a tier. We'll <laughs> end it there. We'll leave that for our scale discussion. Uh, or Disney. Um, I don't know. Might see piss people off. Yeah. See, there's just nothing special here. It's just kind of like a Friends Junior line at this point. Yeah, they have a couple of, like, the Disney train was fine. Um, wasn't amazing. The uh, the castle was pretty awesome. Don't get me wrong. Um, but that's one set in a sea of, you know, 100 sets. And this is exclusively talking about, like, Disney Princess, Disney, like, Mickey Mouse themes, Marvel, Star Wars, Pirates of the Caribbean, etc. are all their own licensed themes, so... This is really talking about like that pure Disney. I think it's important too for us to acknowledge that neither of us are Disney adults, and so correct. Um, yes, we. I, I know we both enjoy Disney movies, but uh, the builds. You know, if they would built like buildable Nemo's, or like a a reef or something. Yeah. Um, that would be kind of fun. If they did. Uh, 
I still think like Moana could really use like minifigures instead of like the mini dolls. But with Maui being like a big fig, although I think he was a big fig, wasn't he? He was a big fig, yeah. I I think that could be revisited. I, I'm, yeah, I don't know. The if they want to take this thing up a notch, they need to make them and gear them a little bit more towards some of our adult stuff, like they did with the new Snow White set, like they did yeah. with um, the recent uh, Little Mermaid set, Simba. That's just like I think they're going that way. But I was gonna say that yeah. Snow White set that was an icon set, right? No, it wasn't. Or uh, idea set. Uh shoot! I think it was, and so was, was the Sanderson sisters. The right. Uh, and so was um, Steamboat Willie. Like, the, yeah. the, the majority of the good sets that you think of when you think about Disney gave ideas and not Disney. Yep. So I think that's the issue with it, right? Agreed. It's a little See, off on like what people actually want because it's trying to be more towards like the younger female audience based off of the sets yeah. that they're producing. Dots. Yeah, F. F. N- <laughs> enough said. <laughs> I Even, think it's a clever idea. It just it's not super compelling. It's worse than us. art. It's art but worse. Oh. <laughs> I mean that's, that's what this trailer is saying, right? I mean it's like, yeah, I don't know. That's Dreams. Dreams. D. I will only give it a D. I agree because I'm interested to see where this theme goes long term. I don't like the short turn. They've gone away from us a very obvious gimmick in these sets. But the gimmick is it has one build and then you rebuild it into something kind of dreamy and crazy. And I think it's neat to see where their thought process is going. But to some extent, you could do that to any Lego set. Uh-huh. And so what makes this theme stand out really is the story that's being told. And I I, is there a TV it. show for dreams? Yeah, it's on YouTube. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. It, it would be interesting if they got into, like, nightmares. <laughs> maybe, maybe that'll they be where they go. Yeah, they that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, they kind of feel like nightmares in some cases. Yeah, they're like little alien guys. Yeah, I don't know. I, I guess I'd have to watch the YouTube series to to get more out of it, but I mean, clearly there's like a good guy and a bad guy, like there's some sort of faction in the in the set. You can get that much information about the sets, um, but I I don't yeah D. Let's leave it there D. Okay. Duplo. Do I just call this a U and cop out? I mean, it's kind of like I mean I you know what you have a kid will, now, so I'll default to you because like I don't have a kid yet. I, I would agree that you is probably where to go with that. Duplo is a great series, but Duplo itself has licensed their own sets. And um, so, I mean, certainly Duplo is its own building system, but just like how we put system, because it sort of encompasses so much, I think Duplo could encompass so much. If we look at just like the building blocks on their own, I mean, as adults, like, yeah. Other than using Duplo to build up like large rock features, I don't really know what else as adults we would well why we would really be interested in Duplo. Can I actually make an argument for C because of that reason? So if because you're ever you if you're rock. ever if you're ever building something really tall and you just need to fill the space with bricks, you use Duplo because Duplo is system compatible and aren't isn't what makes some Lego themes good is that they transcend what they're meant to do. And in this case, it's literally like a baby toy. But yet, you as an adult fan of Lego still find a way to use it and incorporate it into mocks. Um, and yeah, there's some licensed themes with it. It's been around forever at this point. It's like the first stepping stone. It's, as far as like what I said, functionality-wise, you have no other purpose to use it. But that's why I put it in a C. All right, I'll I'll even push it a little higher. I think it needs Ooh. to go to B. And I'll, here's my argument. Here's yeah, my argument. Argue away. It's it's that 
we are it's really fun to see little west play with duplo but she doesn't really play with it right now she just likes to take them apart but she's learning fine motor skills by doing that dexterity right she's recognizing that they are connected and that they can be separated and she's separating them she isn't necessarily building with them yet but i'm sure she will they have a variety of different colors which helps with you know different visually visual acuity and, and differentiation of shapes uh, but then they also introduce things like numbers and letters too in some of the duplo sets and so from a very young age kids are learning how to build they're learning how to construct stuff and i'm finding like as a, a parent when we're picking toys for for our daughter It's like, well, Duplo does this. Duplo does this. Like, mm -hmm. oh, we want building blocks? Great. Well, that's just Duplo. Like, it, it really kind of corners the market on some of this stuff in, like, a really good way that, like, I don't feel bad about buying a Duplo for for my daughter. I'll just do yeah. it. You know what I mean? So, so, so this theme sets out to do something, right, which is be a, a baby toy, and it does that really well. And then it's also found a way to transcend that 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 goal and be a part of the AFL community because you can use it to build bricks off of and build up really really fast so yeah totally down for a beat here nice gabby's dollhouse that's a really new theme yeah i'm gonna call it an f i i almost would argue for you because sure. it's so new. Um, I don't, are they even out yet? Or are they, did they come out? I don't know. I think they are out. But they, I, it's, a, it's a very unknown theme for yeah. us. It's very child-oriented, like 4-plus oriented. Um, it seems almost like a 4-plus a version of, of Friends. Sure. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'll just leave it at that. I don't uh, really have... I, it's hard to even have an opinion on it. It just kind of reminds me of like what they did with DC Superhero Girls and then um, Power Powerpuff Girls, which I would yeah. consider D's or F's. But just like Friends yeah. has like found a way to like be goaded, whereas like those are just what they are. It's okay that they are that, but they're not anything special. Yeah, I agree. So, I'm fine putting it at you. Uh, Harry Potter. I'm gonna instantly throw this up an A. I don't know about you. Um, nope. Yeah, I don't think it can be S. I know some people are like big Harry Potter fans. That's fine. Not trying to diss Harry Potter here. But I think in terms of Lego sets, like the Lego IP of Harry Potter feels really dry. I mean, we're on to like our 20th iteration. I know that's hyperbole um, of, of a castle building systems, right? Like we just came out with one with the relaunch in 2018. They quickly started doing another one in what 2021 and i think now they're just releasing a brand new another great haul and it's like i just feel like they just every three years it's like every set in here is a loops land speeder where they're literally just re-releasing the same sets every four to five years because there's just not much here to build off of it's tough too because unlike something like star wars there isn't a lot of new harry potter um content content to really base off of which right. is i mean there was an attempt um a poor one yeah, but like there was no sense <laughs> i i do think like some of this stuff it is fun to see some of these things revisited the newest great hall is pretty great uh pun intended <laughs> that was stupid that was, that um was, that was dumb but that's it, okay it, it that's is okay. a great it's a great set though the newest train uh the minifigure play scale train looks great so I'm, I'm excited to see what they do what what excites me about lego harry potter is seeing some of the new stuff that they figure out every year whether that's like the expanded uh the additions to uh Diagon Alley that came out this summer those were exciting to see i do agree that new Hag hogwarts haggard's hut is probably one of the better haggard's huts that we've gotten in a long, long time. So uh, I'm always curious to see what they continue to come up with. But uh, yeah, that's where I'll leave it. Hey. Yeah. And I just 
it's A because it's it's awesome. It's just not S because it's just there's a lot of repeats there. Yeah. Yeah, you know, like they those oh my gosh, those first Harry Potter faces that they came out with for that those first sets were like the cringiest things of all time. Um ugh, ugh. okay, sorry, I'm gonna have nightmares tonight thinking about them. Let's move on to icons. Um icons going to S for me. Uh, same reason as creator expert. Um, I, I look at icons as like just it's just supposed to be like Lego's greatest projects, Lego's greatest hits. Um, technically, FYI, things like Rivendell fall under icons, Optimus Prime, for example. So there's just a lot of good here. Yeah, I agree. The Lego icons theme is like we mentioned with Creator Expert, where LEGO is able to attempt these one-off sets that have either been themes in the past that they're revisiting, or um, they're able to, to build these sets out that, that they've never done before. And it's just really exciting to see what continues to, to build in the Icon line and to see where it goes. And I think LEGO just has a winner here, right? This is adult fan of LEGO. Um, I mean, it's it's everything that the A Falls have have really ever wanted, and it's a theme that really feels like it's been intentionally designed from A Falls or for A Falls from the start. Right. But if it's icons, it doesn't necessarily mean you know what's interesting about that, right? Is like the new Christmas series or the holiday series, right? The Alpine Inn wasn't that an eighteen plus set? Yeah, on icons. Like it, it certainly wasn't an 18 plus build as it, it traditionally has been, right? How their age rankings has mm -hmm. sort of been a measurement of complexity of the build process. These are just sets that are geared for adults, but it wasn't an overly complex set to build. And it's a fun set, but it's, it's still a play set. But they're, they're gearing this now for like the adult collectors who are putting together Christmas villages every year like you and I do. Right. And so it's really cool to see what Lego creates there. All right. Icons and Creator Expert are two sets in S right now, followed by Ninjago, City, Classic Space, Friends, and Harry Potter in A. West, where does Belleville fit in? Uh, for me, D. Yeah, I honestly, with something like Belleville, would even almost argue you for a theme. Yeah. And I, I I just don't know enough about it to really... You know, I, it was out when we were younger. Uh, it was on shelves because it was like free friends. Um, I, I don't... Yeah, I, I, I hate to cop out and put it in you, but... Um, but I also think that's important because it's a theme that I know didn't really resonate with either of us but I'm sure there are some merits to the theme but neither of us are I mean at the end of the day it is our tier list so and we're making the rules and we can kind of set them however we like but I do think it's important to acknowledge if it's just something that neither of us were really interested in, it shouldn't necessarily detract from the theme itself. You know what I mean? Well, I just, like, it also didn't have, like, minifigures or mini dolls. Like, they had literal dolls in it. And it was, like, this weird Lego scale. It was kind of, like, an attempt, like, Galador, just to do something different. Oh, yeah, they were, they were Barbie size. They were they Barbie were dolls. Kind of I mean, they were, like, half the size, I want to say. But yeah, they had like Lego. Oh, yeah. Let's let's make that one an F. Yeah, <laughs> like like Paradisa, like I can get behind and like call that a C maybe. But like Belleville is just like weird. <laughs> yeah, we'll call that one an F. Um, uh, Okie dokie. Big one eighty for for West. <laughs> uh, Lego Ideas is up next. Um, Teeter and A here. I'm uh, sorry, S here. Yeah, I think S is a good call. Yeah, I, I do too. I think especially for A-Falls, Lego Ideas has become the new theme that most of us are excited about on, on almost every single release. Right. Even if the release isn't something 
that that we are maybe immediately interested in we're still interested in the process the build for example the typewriter was one that like i wasn't super excited about but what seeing a cool build. how they put that together yeah i i just think ideas is pushing the boundaries of lego sets and i really like how it creates a relationship between the set designer and the set it, like yeah. the theme itself and and does give lego fans a bit of a voice in what lego creates i, I think well i think well said in the fact that you said exactly what i was going to say no um in the fact that you said um you know it's pushing the boundary of lego the reason i'm like instant s clutch here is because kuso is is cut out of this and we have Kuso on here as a separate theme, and we could count it all as one. I'd, I'd still count it as S, but I would say Kuso is more of an A or B because that was just Lego Ideas kind of like trying to figure out what it wanted to be, and it wasn't pushing any boundaries. It was just like, here's a car, here's a random exosuit, but like now, I mean, like we got ship in the bottle, right? We got the old fishing store. We've had themes come from Lego. I mean, Minecraft was originally a Lego Ideas theme, right? Sonic was originally a Lego Ideas theme. Um, I know there's a couple more. I'm all blanking on them. TVs, yeah, I mean, it's, there's kind of like sub-themes of Ideas now. At this, I mean, it's really turned into like this, like, here's these random like one or two offsets, which was Kuso, to like, it's Lego Ideas, you know? Yeah. All right. I mean, you get... Oh, sorry. Go oh, ahead. Do you want me to keep pushing, or did you have anything else? Okay. Indiana Jones. We're going to go through a series of kind of heavy hitters of license themes here. Um, we have Indiana Jones next, and then we'll go to Jurassic World, then Marvel, then Star Wars. Depending on how far we get, though, there's there's going to be a part two at least of this um, so that we don't have it too long for the listener. So um, we'll see how far we get with Indiana Jones here. If, if we got to leave you on a little bit of cliffhanger, well, Marvel did it to you too, and you still came back. So um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll leave there, but, uh, in Indiana Jones West, what do you think? I would say B. Yeah, cool. That's right where I was going to put it too. I don't think it's a, um, I think again, kind of like the DC argument. If you look back at where it was, you know, back when it was originally coming out, it was like one of the few licensed themes, right? It was, one, it was like after Star Wars, like Indiana Jones was like one of the, the, the next logical jump. Um, but those sets really weren't anything crazy special. It did give us a lot of military soldiers, which was cool. I think the difference between Indiana Jones and DC is the stuff that we got recently with Indiana Jones is really good. Phenomenal. Um, yeah, I'd, I almost wish they'd revisit the entire theme. Sure. I know that they only did the modern sets because of the latest movie that came out mm -hmm. dial of destiny but i think the entire theme could re could use a um a modernized wave of sets and series based on the older movies and they could really lego could really cash in on that nostalgia but there's only five movies in this series there are books there are young indiana jones movies that were like direct to VHS, right? That's, uh, uh, you know, the, before pre DVD. For those of you who are are not aware, um, and and I, yeah, I think you said it. Let's let's move on. B. Yeah, I think um, I've built some of the older sets too, and there there's they're not that special. Of what there's some there are some special ones there, but I think the fact that they came out with all those sets. And literally, we didn't get any Dial of Destiny sets. Just tells you like where the culture is at with the uh, IP in general, right? Like, <laughs> oh, they could be any higher than that for that reason. All right, Jurassic World. And I was just looking at the the actual list. Um, it looks like this is including Jurassic Park as well. So we have Jurassic World slash Jurassic Park for what it's worth. Um, theme near and dear to my heart personally i would have to teeter between an a and a b i'd call this one a b plus if i could when i look at the themes that are in b i think it's better than them when i look at the themes that are in a i think it's not better than those or on the same level as them i'm gonna say a though 
simply because it's like a way for like us to get dinosaurs. Dinosaurs are awesome. Um, it's become more and more of an evergreen theme every year. We've had some really great sets. Um, West, am I out of out of line here? I would actually push for B. Okay, I I agree Defend with it. your assessment that that it's probably better than what we have identified for our B themes, but not as good as the A theme, which I would argue means that it should stay in the B level. It's just probably the strongest B theme. But... I agree. The this series is... It's not getting stale, right? They've been creating new movies. The movies haven't been good, but they've been creating new movies. They've introduced new dinosaurs. They've revisited old dinosaurs. There's an entire two movies that they have not visited, though, from the original trilogy, which would be interesting to explore. Um, but they haven't, for some reason. Yeah. And I think the sets are great, but if you look at the sets, it's just like a lot of Chris Pratt's. Just yeah. like over and over and over again. The sets and, really, the builds themselves aren't that good, right? If you take out the dinosaurs, the sets are mad. Some of the vehicles are fun. But some of them. That, that's about it. They're yeah. fun. A lot of ATVs. God, I could, I could <laughs> honestly even argue C at this point. We're going to leave, I think we leave yeah, B because there's there is some really good stuff here. Like the UCS T Rex and the gate are really really cool, but I'm yeah, definitely not on A anymore. And I th um, I think it'll feel better as this list gets filled out too. Let's do one more, and then okay. uh, apologies, we're gonna have to pause and do a part two here at least because uh, there's 190 themes, and uh, rather than have everybody listen to all of it over five hours, we'll split it up and uh, continue the conversation so that we can do the themes justice too. But the last theme we'll cover in this week's episode is going to be Marvel. West, where do you think we put Marvel? Oh, that's a tough one. I, I see you hovering over A, and I think I would probably agree with A. We've had some really great Marvel sets. We've also had some real stinkers out of Marvel too. The highs are just, really high, and the lows are really lo like really low. And you did mention that kind of for Ninjago too. I I think the highs though keep you coming back. The new Sanctum Sanctorum, the new the Daily Bugle, Avengers Tower. Thor's I mean, Marvel Hammer, as a series is just Hella like a Carrier. lot of cultural impact in the last two decades, right? The MCU. Mm -hmm. For us, it was the older movies um, that that were huge, not so much the newer ones. But even some of the new stuff has um, had a huge impact as well. So I, I definitely would argue, I think it's a solid A. Yeah, I think unlike DC, like you know, the Guardians ship that came out last year with Guardians of the Galaxy three was really good. Some of those Black Panther two sets were excellent, even though the movie wasn't that good. Um, Black Panther two that was, was fine, bummer, by the um, way. but you know the it wasn't good it wasn't it wasn't fine it was all over the place it, it was it was i thought it was fine um the um <laughs> lost my train of thought here the um new milano ucs is like really awesome as well so there's just there's a lot of highs here if this were marvel back like 10 years ago where, where marvel superheroes was at or even not even 10 years ago like eight years ago Six years ago, it would have been totally different. What's what's putting this in A is is the UCS sets because before Marvel was like the crappy sets that had the really good minifigures. Now it's both. Now it's now it's really good sets that have really good minifigures. Still some stinkers in there. Don't get me wrong, but definitely way more good than there has been bad recently in terms of sets, at least. All right, so yeah, Wes, I would agree. Do we want to stop there and move on to part two? We'll move on to brick mail, and then uh, we'll we'll get to part two next week. So if anybody's watching the YouTube video, here's a little glimpse of some of those that we will be talking about next week. What are we building?
All right, Grinch, so like you said, we're going to pick this up next week. I got a screenshot of where we left off. Uh, it was Lego Star Wars, so that'll be an exciting one to discuss. But before uh, we end our episode today, let's talk through what we're building this week. Grinch, what are you building this week? All right, so I actually left my house last Monday, and I got back literally this afternoon at like 4, but I still built Lego. I um, actually went to like a couple Lego stores. I didn't find any Lego to buy, uh, but I was in San Diego for the weekend, and there was like a really cool like collectibles exchange that had a um, lot of just as like a more of like anime focus, but had a lot of like like a surprising amount of Lego there. Like every couple booths had some sort of Lego. Um, so shout out to Shipwreck Collectibles. Uh, they were there. They've got two stores in the area. Uh, and an online store. The uh, owner was super nice. Had some good prices on some retired sets, just nothing that I needed. Uh, but I did build the Endor diorama set on Sunday before Ooh. I left. Um, excellent set. I think I, I saw some negative reviews on it on like the Lego website. I was trying to get an idea of what other people thought about it, I guess because of the trees. But um, I, I mean, like the trees in there. It, it's like if you're mad that the trees are capped off, like it's a diorama. Like literally the sides, the front, the back of it's capped off. Like if you look at like the the trash hey, compactor, like literally the ceilings taken off of it. Like <laughs> you gonna make like like uh, two foot tall redwood trees in your little right, right, right. Fifteen by thirty two diorama. I think I I didn't I didn't fact check this but usually jang's not wrong on these sort of things he's he said that if you wanted to have it the redwood trees to be minifigure scale they'd have to have been like six foot tall and i was just sure. like hmm yeah let's have that as a diorama that goes from like where it is on the shelf right now to like four <laughs> like could yeah. you imagine displaying that <laughs> so i do have a question for you how was the speeder bike build Oh, they were good. Um, the one gripe I have with it is that the way that it's shown on the box and how it sits there, I can't, yeah. I can't get it to make that, um, that slight of an angle because it uses one of those superhero right. from the DC superhero CMS um, pegs mm -hmm. or whatever to like angle on. So it's at a forty-five degree angle, and I can't get that at any other angle. I twist it, but then it's you know nose is down I, I change it up a little bit then the nose is up so I, I you can really you can't get it quite to the angle that's at which is um i'm not like mad about it per se but it definitely i think would have looked a little bit better but i think it's just a little bit of expectation versus reality with the how it's on the box and the pictures versus how it actually came together like i put it together i'm like well that looks weird but it, it makes sense because yeah. like it is it is more of a 45 degree angle which in the movie you know re-watching that i rewatched that on the plane it is more of a 45 degree angle, so like really swooping through it, even sometimes, you know, 90 degree angle. So, you know, it is what it is. But those are just, that's, nice. that's just my only I, nitpick. Those are two of the trees I really liked, and then because they looked like redwoods, or they kind of gave you that impression. And then the speeder bikes, I just thought were like probably one of the best speeder bike oh. builds that Lego's ever created. I think it is. Both I in mean, scale for the minifigure, but also. Um, in, in terms of the detail they packed in. Nice part usage throughout. Yeah, really good. Yeah, nice. What I'm building this week, I picked up the uh, BMW 2-pack Speed Champions, which was wow. exciting. I just built the M4 last night. Uh, what's special about these sets is they have the new uh, transparent black windscreens on them that have oh. carried over into the new summer line as well, the Wave which is exciting to see those pieces in that color, which is cool because those can be put onto older Speed Champions too. I've, I think I mentioned this in our Speed Champions episode, but the scale for the M4 is just way too big. Uh, but I'm excited about the LMP car, uh, the Le Mans prototype car. I don't know if the, that BMW car actually races in Le Mans prototype, but that is the vibe I get from that, that vehicle itself. Um, which I think pairs nicely with the Porsche that I just finished from the last wave, which is really exciting. Uh, some of their race cars that they're doing right now uh, that LEGO is creating in Speed Champions scale, the F1s, the LMPs, they look really great. So it's a, it's a really great scale for LEGO to build in for those, uh, and probably some of the best scaled Speed Champions sets uh, around. But 
anyway, so that's exciting. I'm, I'm looking forward to the next one. I'll probably part out the M4, but it was still a fun build. Anyways, so that's what we're building this week. Next, we're going to do brick mail. Brick mail. Grinch, why don't you take our first... Uh, do you want to take these, or do you want me to just knock them out real quick? Uh, do you want me to take Eric, or... Can you take Taco? I'll take Eric. You take, you take Taco. I'll take Taco? All right. Yeah, boy, Taco. My boy, Taco. God, tacos are my favorite food. Um, I would love to see multiple in-depth videos on Johnny Thunder. I think he was relating. We asked about Johnny Thunder, like, when we did the theme review uh, in our last episode. Yep. Would you want to see, like, just Johnny Thunder as a whole and like just cover everything all at once or like really dive in because they're really separate i mean the idea of johnny thunder is very similar it's kind of like indiana jones right but like each of the different you know sub themes of johnny thunder are very different uh and i think it's definitely mm -hmm. worth doing it because it was like at a time when lego wasn't doing themes um so like for example they did the dinos right so i think we need to do that justice because that was really the first foray into like minifigures and dinosaurs right there was an ancient egypt theme uh, for Johnny Thunder, there's there's a lot there. Yeah, animals, the right? Theme. Like minifigure scale animals that like we still. That was like the first time we ever got an elephant. So I'm, I obviously we'll do the theme review. I don't need to do it now, but um, glad that was your feedback and, and request is that we we split it into multiple smaller segments because I would agree there too. And um, nice, yeah. Thank you, uh, your boy Taco, for for the comment. Uh, keep them coming. And we'll we'll definitely do that that breakout because I think that'd be really interesting. Our last brick mail for the week comes from Eric, who wrote in, and he he wrote us a really nice email. And I'm not going to go through the entire thing, uh, partially because there is some personal information in there that that we did not get Eric's permission to share. But I one of the things that that he said uh, that I thought uh, was fun uh, was. Uh, he just reached out and said, um, hey, he appreciated that, you know, these conversations we're having about being adult collectors of Lego really spoke to him, specifically the one about burnout and collection fatigue. Uh, he said that at one point he walked away for about six months to a year, but that he usually comes back or that he has so far come back to the hobby. Um, but he also said that the episode on moving was very practical uh, and then uh, just kind of talked about um, his own history with Lego, which goes back a little bit more than ours. Uh, so, Eric, thank you for writing into the podcast. We really appreciate it. Um, I think we'll uh, both respond to you uh, in an email uh, personally um, after this episode, but we appreciate your, uh, that, that you're listening and if you have any suggestions for future episodes, we'd love to hear them. And then um, he did ask um, any suggestions oh, yeah. of store events slash group uh, in a specific area where he's from. Uh, I obviously won't disclose that, but um, in terms, like if you're in A Fall and you're just looking to like get involved with other A Falls, I'd fit, say try to find your local lug, uh, which is a Lego user group. Um, usually, they have a Facebook or something like that, um, some social media presence. So, like that can be a really good way. I know um, if you have a bricks and minifigure nearby, which Eric, I know you you do, um, then um, you can go there, and they all often do like a fall events specifically. I was actually just at one in San Diego, and they're talking to me about it. I'm like, well, I don't I don't live here anymore. Sorry, <laughs> I'd love to, but like I'm, I'm just visiting, um, so that can be a really good way as well. Um, and then of course, um, going to like Lego uh, conventions can be an awesome way. Um, to get to just know other A-Falls. Uh, you can get to know builders there. The lugs are usually there. Um, you know, they, have, they have special events there too where you can get to know um, you know, um, other, other A-Falls as well. So they're, they're, those are just some ways that, that come to mind um, just for in general terms. Yeah, I think there's definitely some uh, brick cons or brick fairs near you, Eric. So... Uh, I think those would be great ways to get out and, and meet some people. The brick, uh, bricks and minifig that we mentioned on the previous episode, um, they're doing a, a lot better of a job of reaching out. I, they're all independently owned. These guys do a great job of, of 
announcing builder events and stuff. So if you're interested, I would just reach out to that Bricks and Minifig and get your uh, email on their email list. And that way they can uh, reach out to you and uh, let you know of stuff going on in, in the local area. So, again, Eric, we appreciate the email and, and thanks for writing in. And that's a wrap of another episode of 8Falls Welcome. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe and leave us a review on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or wherever you're listening to the show. If you'd like to write the podcast, please email us at 8FallsWelcome at gmail.com. Follow us on Instagram at 8FallsWelcome. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.